Well, good morning. Uh, I'm Mark Morris. I'm the pastor of worship and senior adults at Morningside. And so glad that you could join us for our devotion this morning. Uh, Following our D group devotions for the week, I'm going to be pulling out Matthew 27, and I'm going to be reading uh, verses 50 through 53. And uh, the events around this is the crucifixion of Christ on the cross, and and this is his last words before um, before he died on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. And verse 50 says through 53, and Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth shook, the rocks were split, the tombs were opened. And many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. So the word I have for this devotion this week is access. Upon Jesus' death on the cross, the Bible tells us that the curtain, which blocked the entrance to the most holy place, it tore. And it didn't tear from the bottom to the top, but it tore from the top to the bottom, which showed that no man, no man split the veil. God did it. So why was this significant? It was significant because the way into God's presence now was open to all. You know, Hebrews 10, verses 19 through 22 says, Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through the through his flesh. And since we have a great hot priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Praise God that we have direct access to our Father in heaven through what our Lord Jesus Christ did on the cross, through the blood of Jesus. And if that wasn't enough to show the magnitude of his death on the cross, God's word says that the earth shook, rocks split open, tombs opened up, and many saints that were previously dead appeared to many. You know, 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, He made him who knew no sin, to be sin on our behalf so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. And then Psalm 103, 11 through 13 says, For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his loving kindness toward those that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Just as a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. So our application in this, you know, one of the applications is really is praise God for forgiveness of sin that only comes through a relationship with Jesus Christ. You can't work enough to earn God's salvation. You can't be good enough. You know, even the Bible says there's none righteous, no, not one. There's none that does good. There's none that seek after God, but you must come through Jesus Christ only by the blood of the Lamb. Praise God that we can pray to our Heavenly Father. The sacrificial death of Christ on the cross broke down that veil, the dividing wall between us and God the Father. Jesus was the once and for all sacrifice. God's word tells us that without the shedding of blood, there could be no forgiveness of sin. So, you know, our response to all of this should be, as we walk through the day, as we walk through each day of our lives, that, that God has blessed you with, to be sure to praise God that, and, and lift your prayers to him and know that we have direct access to God because through the blood of Jesus Christ and what he did. You know, the hymn writer wrote, Hallelujah, what a Savior who would leave his home in heaven for one like me. Hallelujah, what a Savior who could take this poor lost sinner and set him free. Hallelujah, what a Savior. Hallelujah, what a friend. Saving, helping, keeping, loving. He is with me to the end. That's a reason for us to praise and uh, God for, absolutely. So I just pray that you have a wonderful day. You know, this has been a, a, a great week. We've had Vacation Bible School this week, and we've had a wonderful week, and I'm just thankful for all the 
children that are here, but I'm thankful also for our workers that have worked so hard this week and uh, just praying for children to be saved. Thank you, Pastor Jamie, for the all that you put into the preparation and your helpers too. So it's been a great week. Listen, I want to invite you to worship this weekend, uh, Sunday morning at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. And then 1010 is our connection groups where we can get together. You can just connect to each other, study God's Word. So God bless you. Pray that you have a wonderful day. Day.